In this video, we'll get setting up the RS2 Plus for the first time. We're going to go to Settings, Wi-Fi, and we're going to connect our Reach Wi-Fi. Password is AMOLED Reach. And then we'll open Reach V3. And we're connected, and let's set up Reach. We'll add our Wi-Fi network manually. And press connect. And you can see here it says Reach is connecting to another network. Switch to Joe phone to continue. That's my other network. So what we're going to do is first we're going to look at the RS2 Plus and make sure it goes to a solid blue light there, indicating that it has connected to my network. And there it has. Otherwise, it'll turn back to white. So let's just close out. And we have to be on the same network in order to communicate, so we'll take a look for that. And we'll connect here. Now let's open Reach V3 up again. And refresh. It looks like I'm actually not connected to my phone. Oh, there we go. There we go. Set up reach. Uh, we can name it. Let's say this is going to be a rover. See no spaces. Let's save. Hmm. And now we will upgrade our reach firmware. And this will probably take about 10 minutes. All right, I'm all updated now and I can reboot, go to the app. And the RS2 is gonna go ahead and reboot. And when it, as it reboots, it's gonna look for the internet connection or the Wi-Fi hotspot that it connected to last time. I have that turned off now, so what's going to happen is it's going to look for that hotspot and it won't find it, and then we'll connect to its Wi Fi. You can do it either way, there's no, no real reason, rhyme or reason, other than I just want to turn off my hotspot to save a little battery. Alright, the RS2 just about booted up. We're going to go settings, and I can see the white light, so I know the Wi-Fi will be available. And there's Reach Rover. And I have to retype this password because I changed the name. Same thing, I'm going to reach. And let's jump into our Reach view. And you can see the lights are stable, so it should show up. Now we'll just run through some settings here. So let's start with logging. Now you might want to log data to process an opus, or you might want to log data for PPK processing. So let's start with opus. We're going to go to settings. We're just going to tap on opus here, and that just gives us some defaults that opus will appreciate. And we'll apply that. Then I'll also do a backup file, backup source data for Rhinex. This is just like a full file. Um, that we could use for PPK. Right now I have two files running here, one for Opus and one for PPK potentially. So we'll exit out of that. And let's go to settings. On our rover, we might want to set Bluetooth on if we are streaming our position to some other device. For instance, Field Genius for Android, we want to turn this on if we're using a rover or for our rover and GNSS settings. Again, we'll just consider this as a rover from the start. Uh, we won't need to change anything here. We'll just note kinematic positioning mode, update rate of five hertz, and correction input also matters for the rover, so a few options here, a few main options. LoRa, that's its internal radio. We could choose that if we're running a base rover setup. We could run Ntrip. The Ntrip by itself, will require 
internet connection to the RS2 itself, so either through a SIM card or through a hotspot connect to the RS2. And trip over Bluetooth, you'll just need internet access on your data collector. So you could hotspot just your tablet, and that's it. You just connect over Bluetooth to your RS2. So let's say we're using Base Rover, so I'll switch to LoRa. And correction output, this only matters for the base, so we could just turn that off for our rover. And position streaming again for Field Genius for Android. We're going to send an ERB stream over Bluetooth. And we'd be set there. And position streaming too, we just turn that off. And at this point, our, our rover is all set. Now, if we're running a base, we could go to GNSS settings. And we'll just make two changes here. Go static. And we'll set that to one hertz. And we don't have any input on our base, so we'll leave that off. And we are going to set a correction output. We're going to send that over lower radio to our rover. Uh, notice the frequencies are the same, so are these air data rates. And position streaming, we're not streaming our position. Turn that off. And we'll go to base mode and just take a quick look at this. So you can see coordinate entry mode right now is average single over two minute period. Um, so after two minutes uh, out in the open with a single position, it will generate a coordinate. It'll be an average coordinate. It'll be pretty rough. Um, so we could also configure this and change that to average fix if we are connecting it to an entrip network and we can average that fixed position. And so that would be more accurate position, um, but not typically used because typically if you have an entrip network available, you'll just run that straight to your rover and you won't worry about your base position. But there are some applications where it would make sense. Uh, but the other major one is manual. So manual coordinate entry, we can enter in an antenna height for our base station a lat long or ellipsoidal height and for our actual coordinate or we could choose from a project. So any existing project we create in reach U3 we can just grab a point if we're setting up over that point with our base. So that's it for the base we just need to make sure again correction outputs turned on lower up most likely and we want to make sure our base base mode coordinate entry mode um, is set to the desired mode, whether that's manually entered or whether that's averaged. Thanks for watching.